Hi, I'm Charlie Huang from the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine and Frederick Health Hospital. Today we're going to talk about what to do for catheter-induced dissection of the lima uh, during a diagnostic cath. The patient is a 60-year-old man uh, with cabbage uh, with a lima to LED, vein graft to an OM, and vein graft to the PDA. Uh, he presented uh, to the hospital with fever and shortness of breath and was eventually diagnosed with pneumonia. A, a troponin was checked, uh, which came back at 12 nanograms per mil. Uh, the echo was unchanged. He had a low normal EF uh, with uh, inferior hypokinesis. Uh, his uh, condition improved dramatically after a couple of days of antibiotics, and uh, he was referred for a cath. Uh, you see uh, here uh, the first shot of the lima uh, from the uh, left radial approach. So uh, what we see here is a classic sign of the very start of a dissection uh, that is important to recognize immediately. A new uh, suddenly enlarged vessel segment, uh, which you see here propagating from the ostium of the lima down. This sudden enlargement uh, is due to the formation of a false lumen and blood and contrast filling uh, the newly formed false lumen. Uh, this dissection was almost certainly catheter induced. Now, um, when we think of a dissection, we typically think of contrast staining or the dreaded white line uh, formed by the uh, dissected tissue flap. Uh, but we actually don't see that here, at least uh, not yet. So um, when you find yourself as, uh, in the unfortunate situation of a catheter-induced coronary dissection, uh, there are a few important things to keep in mind uh, so that uh, you don't make the problem worse. Uh, first, uh, stop injecting. Uh, continuing to inject uh, could continue to enlarge the false lumen and make it that much harder uh, to get a wire back into the true lumen. Uh, second, uh, try to disengage the catheter. Uh, this is to limit any further trauma uh, from the catheter tip. Uh, if you need to get more shots, uh, get non-selective shots until you have the vessel wired and under control. Um, third, uh, gently re-engage the vessel and try to get a wire down. Uh, for osteodissections, I suggest changing to a guide of a different shape uh, to uh, minimize repeat trauma. A less forceful guide that is easily disengaged is ideal. Uh, so for the left main, go for a JL guide. For the uh, RCA, use a JR guide. For graphs, including the lima, uh, you might uh, consider using the JR guide as well. So in this case, the IM diagnostic catheter was exchanged to a uh, six French JR4 guide. And um, until there was wire access to the lima, uh, non-selective injections were used uh, to reduce the possibility of further enlarging the false lumen. Uh, wiring was actually quite challenging, and we could not be sure uh, that our wire uh, was in the true lumen. Now, uh, sometimes it can actually be quite difficult to tell uh, whether your wire is in the true or false lumen. Uh, there are some clues. Uh, if the wire advances easily uh, without uh, knuckling or doubling back on itself and without appearing to uh, spiral around the vessel, you're probably in the true lumen. Uh, if your wire easily selects side branches, you're also probably in the true lumen. But also remember that you can also dissect down side branches. So just because you're going down side branches, that's not a slam dunk. Uh, the wire needs to advance uh, freely and easily uh, down the uh, side branches. Uh, if your patient is stable, uh, there are a few other options as well. Um, if there are pre-existing collaterals, uh, or in this case, potentially a flow from the uh, natives, um, uh, you can try to get uh, contralateral access uh, to do a contralateral injection uh, to help you. Alternatively, as we've done here, uh, you can use IVIS, uh, but the IVIS catheter itself uh, can enlarge the dissection plane. Now, uh, many of us uh, do a distal microcatheter contrast injection. Uh, this actually is fairly risky uh, because if it turns out that you were in the false lumen, well, your microcatheter injection has just dramatically enlarged that false lumen. So uh, we decided to reach for IVIS uh, to help us. And um, here is the IVIS run. And fortunately, it did look like we were in the true lumen. Uh, we can actually see the dissection flap, which is that vertical shadow you saw in the images along with the false lumen uh, on the right side of the image. So now um, all we had to do uh, was to stent the dissection flap and, uh, and uh, tack everything up. 
Now, a few words of advice about stenting dissected vessels. Uh, stenting dissected vessels is a precarious and is not the same as stenting non-dissected vessels. Uh, there's a high rate of both early and late complications. Uh, ballooning and stenting can cause uh, extension of the hematoma and propagate the false lumen down the vessel. And appropriately sizing the stent is difficult uh, because of the uh, intramural uh, hematoma. What appear to be uh, the right size uh, can uh, actually become uh, 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 malopose in the future uh, with the hematoma uh, resorbing. Now, predilation uh, should be minimized. Uh, if you need to do it, uh, use a small balloon and keep it at low pressure. Uh, you don't want your predilation balloon to squish out uh, the intramural hematoma and propagate the false lumen further down the blood vessel. And similarly, uh, don't oversize the stent. A large stent will also squish the hematoma out and extend the dissection. Uh, dissected vessels uh, uh, can be hard to uh, assess, and you want to avoid repeated contrast injection. So consider IVIS uh, to help with stent sizing. Uh, size the stent as best you can to the size of the vessel, and this is one of the few situations where I would actually uh, suggest airing on the side of a smaller stent. Next, uh, choose longer stents, uh, far longer than you would normally do for a uh, regular PCI. And it's significantly longer than the dissected segment. You want the end of your stent to be in healthy tissue well beyond the end of the dissection. Why? Um, this will help with pinning in the false lumen and preventing it uh, from propagating. In fact, uh, uh, consider placing short stents preemptively in normal segments proximal and distal to the dissection before you start stenting the dissected segment. These uh, preemptive stents can act as barriers to block the hematoma propagation while you're working on the dissected segment. Uh, finally, as with predilation, postdilation in the dissected segment should be minimized and if done, uh, kept at a relatively low pressure. So um, in our case, uh, th there was no need for predilation, so we decided to uh, directly stent. Uh, we chose a 2.5 by 38 millimeter DES, which is longer than usual and not too big in diameter. Uh, we made sure to cover the ostium of Lima and intentionally protruded the stent a bit into the subclavian to reduce the chance of, of uh, back propagation of the hematoma uh, into the subclavian. And here is the initial result after stenting. Uh, flow uh, in the lima was uh, improved. Um, we can still see the false lumen, meaning that there was still communication uh, between the false lumen and the true lumen. So the question now is how aggressively to post dilate here. Now, normally I like to post dilate enough to completely tack up the dissection flap. In other words, post dilate enough to seal up the communication between the true and the false lumen. Uh, there is always the chance of further anterograde uh, propagation of the false lumen if there is uh, continued communication between the true and the false lumen. Now, sealing up the uh, communication between the true and false lumen does not mean uh, post dilating so much to completely mash out the false lumen. If you actually try to do that, uh, you could squish out the, uh, the intramural hematoma in the false lumen and actually end up causing the dissection uh, to propagate both upstream and downstream. Uh, but here, uh, we were so close to the ostium that we were uh, very concerned about retrograde propagation of the intramural hematoma, so we decided to go gentle uh, with uh, post-dilating. Uh, we uh, re the vessel and tried to match the uh, diameter of the NC balloon uh, to the healthy area of the vessel without the hematoma. Ultimately, uh, we inflated a 275 N uh, millimeter NC balloon uh, at the nominal pressure. And here is the uh, final angiographic result of the Lima, uh, which we felt was reasonable uh, considering the limitation of the location of the dissection. Uh, we then uh, finished the uh, remainder of the cath. Um, all grafts were patent, uh, but there was a diffuse distal disease. Uh, we attributed the troponin elevation to demand ischemia uh, in the setting of his fever and pneumonia. Uh, the patient was discharged uh, the following day. All right, um, take home messages. Um, first and foremost, uh, be uh, very meticulous about your catheter engagement, especially with guides uh, which are stiffer. Um, avoid roofing the tip of the catheter into the vessel wall. And yes, sometimes this is unavoidable. Uh, but if you do, do notice that your pressure tracing is damped, uh, do not inject. 
Now, if you end up uh, with uh, a catheter-induced dissection, uh, the first step is to stop any more uh, contrast injections. You don't want your contrast injections to extend the false lumen. Disengage the catheter, and if necessary, take non-selective shots. Uh, wiring dissected vessels is extremely challenging. Uh, for osteolesions, we discuss using uh, less forceful guides, such as uh, the JL for the left and the JR for the right, to avoid further catheter trauma. The JR guide can also be used for the IM. Um, there are numerous techniques for wiring the uh, dissected vessels. Uh, I cover some of these techniques in, in another video, and uh, I've included the link uh, below. And remember that stenting dissected vessels is not the same as stenting normal vessels. Uh, you need to be less aggressive with your predilation and postdilation so that you don't squish out the intramural hematoma and propagate the dissection. Uh, consider uh, pinning in the dissection with stents, short stents, proximal and distal in healthy tissue. You'll need to use much longer stents than usual. Uh, don't oversize. And in some cases, use IVIS to guide you. Thank you uh, for watching.